Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I, I think we gave it away. I was opening up. I said, you know, left it as a guest. Guest which way of life. But people are looking at you. Maybe you think, you know, we, with the greeting, maybe people figured it out. Maybe with the beard or... Alhamdulillah. Maybe so. So what is it? What is this way of life that when Latinos, Brazilians included, when they look back to their roots, like the African Americans, they want to connect... They go back, they want to f figure out their heritage. Mm -hmm. They go back, many of them, like Dave Chappelle, went back to Africa. And Kunta Kinte, he's calling on God Almighty, Allah. And they figured out, this is our roots, Islam, yeah. Latinos. Same thing here? Same thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Um, a lot of Latinos, what they're doing now is they're, they're rediscovering the roots. They're reading about Islamic Spain. And even for myself, you know, doing some research, you find that Muslims dominated Spain for 780 years, almost eight centuries. And you look at your name, your name like Medina, last names like Medina, even Guadalupe, like my last name, Alvarez, Banal Casar. You start asking yourself where these names come from. And, and a lot of, a good, a popular thing to do nowadays is kind of trace your lineage. A lot of people are doing that with those DNA tests and stuff. And people are discovering, you know, a part of my heritage traces back to Spain. And it don't even make sense, right? Because the Spaniards, when they came to, um, to this part of the world uh, to colonize, they had Muslims with them. You know, we see in Columbus, uh, um, Columbus came when, uh, with ships that were originally owned by Muslims, right? And they had Muslims on there who were guiding them, directing them to come here. And so you people are starting to rediscover the fact that, mashallah, there's Muslims that are, are part of my heritage is from Islam and it starts triggering like an interest to want to know more about what is Islam. So it's, it's a beautiful thing there that people are rediscovering, re reconnecting with who they are. I mentioned so Latinos are the fastest growing ethnicity in, in America? Correct. And statistics show in, in the census they, uh, they've done a study and they're finding out that Latinos are the fastest growing population in America. And the beautiful thing is within that they are also the fastest growing population within Islam. Many, many Latinos are leaving their formal, former religions, primarily Catholicism, for whatever reason. And they're connecting with Islam. And alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity to you know, research it myself. And there's numerous reasons why they're reconnecting or they're, they're discovering Islam. So it's definitely amongst uh, the Latinos, Islam is the fastest growing yes. religion. Yes. And you actually, you look back into it, you discovered all these things. You also came from a, what background? Uh, my family is originally from Ecuador. Ecuador? Yes, uh, South but, America. But they were, they were of the Christian faith? Yeah, my, actually my parents are, were Catholic. Catholic. And they raised me as a Catholic. Um, and alhamdulillah, they've, they've uh, after studying Islam or learning about Islam, they've also embraced Islam too. Yeah, we spoke, we had your story yeah. some time ago. And so you went through this journey. Yeah. And how you, do you feel the more you look into this, you, the more Islam is providing all those answers, those deep questions that people really seek out, the purpose, what's the purpose of life, you know, um, why am I here in this world, fills that void in the heart? Absolutely. I mean, as, as the majority of Latinos, uh, they're raised Catholic, like we said, and they're taught to, the belief in God, their belief in, in God that He's one, that He is the Creator, He is the Supreme Being. But then there's something else within that that kind of throws a tangent. The, the belief in the Trinity and the saints and how do you kind of correlate every single aspect of that religion and still make sense that it's, you know, there's, it's monotheistic. And for myself, it, in many Latinos, it doesn't make sense. So when, they, when they're introduced to Islam and the fact that Islam actually Incur or actually teaches true monotheism, meaning worshiping God alone. There's no other associates, no, no, no nothing else with him, no other partners. They start telling themselves what I was taught originally as a child through Catholicism. This is the true implementation here. You know, another example is uh, the Virgin Mary. She's depicted as a woman with a veil. When you look at any other religion in America, you rarely would see that except in a Muslim, as in an Islamic practice with the, Muslim, with the Muslim women wearing hijab. And as a matter of fact, my grandmother would tell us that when she used to go to church in Ecuador, they were required to wear a veil. And so when she saw that my mother started wearing a veil, she started seeing that, wow, this is, the tr this is where they truly practice that which they taught. 
you know, there's so many other aspects, um, family values. Islam teaches and encourages family values. For example, when Allah mentions, and worship Allah alone, and be kind, and, and be kind to your parents, and don't ever raise your tone towards them, and show them mercy the way they showed you mercy as a child. The Quran mentions this. And families, in, in Latino families are very, very close. I mean, your neighbor is, is taught to, to be your cousin. You, 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 you basically treat them as your cousin. You bring them into your... And so when they see that the family values, especially in this time where society is trying to remove family values, I mean, it's very rare where families now meet at a table to eat. In Islam, it encourages that, that love and that respect and, and that admiration for each other in a family. So when Latinos see that that's part of Islam, they're drawn to that. I mean, there's so many other things. Language. I mean, there's so many things that you can talk about that, um, that re the reason why Latinos are starting to discover Islam as the, the true way of life, you know. And another example with language. It said, that statistically, it said that about 4,000 words originate from Arabic. And, and Spanish words originate from Arabic. For example, like uh, al wudun al qutun in, in Arabic. Um, for example, uh, al jabr Al-Jabr, Al-Hibra. You know, there's so many things. Like even when I discovered like where my name came from, Guadalupe, a part of it is Wadi Valley, and Lupe, which is a Latin word for, for wolf. It, it blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is who, who we are. And many people are doing that. And um, it's just an amazing feeling when you, when you find that connection. You know? So really, it's just going back to the, to, to the original way. Original way. That's it. Yeah. The pure, organic, original way when you go back and you look back to your history, the Latinos look back, it links back to Islam. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and, and it makes sense. You know, as we mentioned, Muslims were in Spain for so long. They left their influence. If you, if you ever vacation in, in Spain, you see masajid that are now have been changed to, to, to churches because of the, the change in the, in, the, in the government, but they're still there. Their influences are there. Arabic writing is all over the wall. So when they're rediscovering that, they're asking themselves the question, okay, well, where else, what else is there? If maybe my ancestors, my great-great-great-grandfathers were Muslim, then what is it about Islam that, you know, that, that, um, that the reason why they practice it, why, why is it that they did that? So I want to ask myself, and many people are doing that, and they're coming into Islam. We've got a lot more to talk about. This is an awakening of the mind and the soul so we can really be upon the truth and we can really get that peace that we're all looking for when we get the purpose in life, why we're here, and we're discussing the fastest growing ethnicity, Latinos, and the way of life that they're drawn to because it's in their roots, it's in their history. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show, and we're talking about the Latino roots. Now, I say Brazilians included. They're yes. included in this bunch, right? Yes. Because they're one of my favorite groups also. You know, we train. You also train the Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yes. And we have a lot of uh, really nice people they're also Latinos, the um, Brazilians. And I want to, there was actually an uh, interesting uh, picture. Health Gracie, you've heard of him? Yes. People are seeing it right now. He's actually in a thobe, and he's in front of a masjid, mm -hmm. and it says he's seeking the blessings of God. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and I've gotten a chance to talk with him. He's a fabulous individual. And some people's faces, you know, they j it just lights up. It's like the fitra inside that God has placed in all of us, right. that spiritual chip. And when God's name is mentioned, you talk about the pure, natural way. Because Islam is just, it just makes sense. Worship the Creator, not the creation. You're not worshiping any of these saints, dead people in the ground, doing these strange superstitions, weird stuff that push people away from religion. Right. Correct? Absolutely. So they get drawn into this. Do you also have this experience? Absolutely. And uh, this is one of the reasons, it's a, a big reason why Latinos are, are uh, embracing Islam. You know, there's, uh, it's that direct connection. There's no, no in-between, there's no intermediary, you know, there's no asking other people uh, for help and, you know, for example, um, confession and stuff like that. So my, many Latinos, when they discover the fact that it's just you and God and you can ask Him for whatever help you need, you know, you can ask Him for forgiveness and it's just direct. Your forehead on the ground and that's it. 
that's what people are looking for. Uh, Latinos are, are a big part of that um, because they have that sense of faith. They have that sense of faith from their upbringing. And the fact that they discover that they don't, there, there isn't any need for hierarchy. You don't need to be a scholar or, or a leader of a, of, of a masjid or of a mosque to have that direct connection. It just be me and you, the normal guy, having, having that direct connection, that deep-rooted connection. It's a satisfaction to the soul, for, for sure. That definitely, that definitely connects. Now, did you also, some people have a, an infinity now, they, they, a deep love for Jesus, peace yeah. be upon him. And they don't know that it's a pillar of faith to believe in Jesus. But now, can you distinguish? Because people are gr they grow up in the Latin countries believing that he was God, literal son of God. Right. What do you say about this? When, um, when I'm talking to Latinos and, um, and we're speaking about Islam, you know, letting them know about Islam, and we bring up the topic of Jesus, because they ask, well, well, how do you, what is your relationship with Jesus? Well, um, how does Islam view Jesus? And we simply tell them, I follow Jesus' example more now than I did before. I love him more now than I did before. And then when they ask, you know, how is that possible? And we share with them the, the story of Jesus from the Quran, from the Islamic point of view, and they see that there is a correlation with what they know, it's a, it, it draws them in. It draw, it's, an, it's an attention grabber. It draws them in and want, wanting to know more. And especially when we explain to him, explain to them the fact that we believe that Jesus was a messenger and prophet, and we clarify from our point of view the the understanding of of this of this concept of the Trinity. As Muslims, we don't we don't believe in that because we don't associate Jesus as part of God or or one of of three. We believe in him as a man who came with this message, just like all the other prophets and messengers. And for the mind, it's simpler to grab. It's just an easier concept to understand. And they begin to, because they already have that love for him, they realize Muslims also have that love. And they actually play the part, you know? And so they begin to draw more into, into that aspect and, and learn more about Islam. There was a famous football player, a soccer player, that just accepted Islam. And he gave his 13 reasons of why he became Muslim. And he said mm -hmm. Islam actually uh, guided me. Well, uh, he actually, uh, what, what he said exactly, what was it that um, Jesus um, led me to Islam. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Jesus led me to Islam. So then he gives examples when Muslims see each other, they greet each other, how Jesus greeted, with peace That's be unto you. Right. The example you gave of his mother, blessed mother, wearing the, the veil. The veil. Yeah. And more so the worship of only God right. alone. That's also in the Bible. But then someone says, why don't I just follow the Bible and just leave off the things that I don't like from there and right. stick where I'm at? Right. Well, when it comes to the way, the way I tell people, and I had this conversation actually with a coworker the other day, is um, there's no doubt that even, even Christian scholars will say that the, that the Bible historically doesn't, is not a proven fact. It's not, it hasn't been preserved just the way the, way the Quran was had many authors, and some, sometimes you don't even know who the author's name was. So for someone, an individual, to take that book and say this is an authentic book, it's very difficult to. And no Christian scholar will admit to that fact. They say it's just divine, divine inspiration, divine words. Um, it's, it's something for the soul. But we don't want just something to have that, that's based on faith. We want something that's concrete too, that's based on facts. And with Islam, you get best of both worlds. It's a matter of having faith, but you also have the factual point that gives you that surety that this is a religion from God and it has been preserved. And a big example is the story of Jesus, the story of Mary, Moses, and all these historical figures that you find in Latino religions, whatever faith they follow, they, they find that and they begin to ask themselves, well, let me look into Islam. And alhamdulillah, many, many are accepting Islam. It's the updated version now. Um, updated. It's, it's just the continuation. It's, as you know, some people say, it's, it's the last chapter, right? It's the, it's the last end of it. And it's a clarification for those questions that many people have. Yeah. The common person will ask themselves, you know, well, what about, what about the Trinity? How do you explain that? You, and if you're left just with, with, with someone telling you, well, you just have to believe, for me, 
it's it's hard. Like you can't just I can't just believe if and and though I used to tell myself if this is God's divine word, his his religion, the, the religion everybody's supposed to follow, the universal religion, then why is it so difficult to understand? Why isn't it just clear cut? When you look at Islam, Alhamdulillah, it's you, you know one plus one is two, two plus two is four. It's clear. It's the way it is, and um, and many people who give themselves the time, who open their minds and hearts to it, they will understand that fact. It's the way of life that has no more updates to it. It's no been, you know, you get the, the phone, the iPad, it keeps updating, updating, right. and if you want to go back to a prior version, you can't even use it anymore. Right. But, Islam, but Islam, there's no is more the update. Seal. It's the seal. It's the seal. It's That's the, it. It's it. But, and and it's, the, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, one, one great thing is, um, for many Latinos, is that there's a balance. You know, Allah mentions in the Quran that, uh, verily, we have made this nation a balanced nation. So, there's no need for you to be a specific title, have a specific title, like for example, a priest or a nun, to have a level of religiosity. You know, there, you don't have to go to extremes and abandon the world to, to be very religious. No, Islam, it teaches us balance. And for Latinos, when they realize, wow, I don't have to be extreme in my belief, I just have to worship God alone and do what He has commanded, my five prayers, my fasting, Pay if I can the, the the charity, make Hajj you know if, if I can, make the pilgrimage if I can, and then that is enough for people, and they begin to realize that because of that balance, they want to embrace that. That's that's a true way of of being able to connect with Allah. And I'm I'm sure you're starting to have an infinity to this. It makes sense. Absolutely. It makes sense. It's common sense. Worship the Creator, not the creation. Deep love for Jesus, but he was a mighty messenger. And never ever did he say in any version of the Bible, worship him or take him as a literal son of God. He was a servant of God calling people to worship God. That's it. We got some more to talk about with you on The Dean Show. You're not going anywhere, are you? I'm not going anywhere. We'll be right back, inshallah. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show. Now we originally started talking about the roots. Mm -hmm. The Latinos have roots in Islam. Yes. African Americans have roots in Islam. Humanity has roots in Islam because the first man who was created, Adam, he was neither a Jew or a Christian, but he submitted himself to God, Abraham. He didn't submit to anyone in creation. He didn't even hear in any of these religions. But when he was told to do what? Submit to the will of God? That's Islam. Is, is that not what it is? Absolutely. So let's go back a little bit to Spain, where now you had the... Muslims, they were actually the superpowers of the world. Yes. And can you take, take uh, because most people, it's a very amazing uh, topic, and, right. and, and many people don't know about, you know, the, the comfort that Jews and Christians and humanity was really, you know, at a different level at that time. Right. You know, it's um, historically, and we know as Muslims that after, after the, uh, the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, many of his companions took it upon themselves to start propagating the message of Islam and they took it to all the four corners of the earth. And not too long after his death, about 70, 80 years, Muslims took it to Spain. And it was led by a, a, a man named Tariq ibn Ziyad. And he took, the, he took Islam to Spain and uh, with the purpose, of course, of spreading Islam. And we know Islam, we said Islam is peace. Islam is surrendering to Allah. And when you see the, uh, the impact that Islam had in Spain, 780 years of, of, uh, of governance and the amount of contribution that Muslims made to that society. I mean, medicine, agriculture, irrigation, engineering. I mean, you have everything that came from that education, uh, universities, um, during that period when, when other, other uh, ethnicity or other religions were in the dark ages. I mean, you had uh, uh, this society flourishing and the people who were within that society also benefited. Jews and Christians that were living within that society, they benefited from that as well. And they lived amongst the Muslims for almost 800 years in peace, benefiting from those riches that Allah had provided them because of the faith that they were establishing there. And, um, and even after the, the, uh, the, the caliphate or the taifas, they fell for whatever reason, you know, they, they, the uh, Christians, they came and they, they took that over. Um, still, you'll find it that Fernandez and Isabella, when they sent Christopher Columbus to the Americas, 
they sent them with Muslim ships, uh, ships that were owned by Muslims, Muslim navigators using Muslim tools, Islamic tools, uh, Muslim tools that were for, for navigating. And when they came here, they came here with Muslims. So what happens is that w Muslims also were here with, with Columbus and whoever else was here, obviously they begin establishing their culture, their culture and their customs, etc. So Islam has, you know, dipped his hand, it's dipped its hand in, in everything, alhamdulillah, by Allah's will. And that's one of the beautiful things. And, and, and many people don't know that. Many people don't realize how, how impactful Islam was for 800 years and the level of peace that it brought to anybody, whether you were a Jew, Christian, even, even non-religious. You didn't have any denomination and Muslim. It's an, an amazing thing. And when people realize that, they can see true Islam at its, at its essence. You have some Latinos families, because it's spreading so quickly, yeah. they end up seeing their daughter who was out there being promiscuous. She was at the nightclubs. Mm -hmm. She was doing all sorts of things, maybe the son also. And you know what? They really didn't raise havoc. But sure. now she came home, and she don't want to live that life anymore. Right. She don't want to be used and abused by men. She don't want to be a sex object, sex toy. And now she's covered her modesty. They see this as something strange. She's, they see her bowing down her head five times a day. And now they start to, you know, correlate the two. And they see, like, look, Muslims, my daughter, oh, my God. How do you say, oh, my God, in Spanish? Ay, Dios. Ay, Dios. <laughs> what's going on? Terroristo. What's happening here? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Have you seen this? Absolutely. And, it's, and I think it's just of, uh, it's due more for, to negative information that is fed through medias. Um, you'll find that many, many... Latinos who embrace Islam, they go through that. And for example, and, and, and when I told you it before, is uh, when I accepted Islam was through a difficult during a difficult time. The nation was going through a difficult time on 9/11, and my dad was the same way. My dad, he said, you know, why convert now? Muslims are, are are being harassed. Why go through that? And many women who go who embrace Islam, and are leaving those old lifestyles of fun and games and amusements and drinking and partying all that stuff to a, a, a life full of of peace and and the fact is that they embrace they embrace it fully covering themselves um, the parents yeah they, they tend to not understand it um, and more so it's just a lack of education and I think it's a great opportunity for us to share with them and teach them about Islam yeah. but no doubt that you find that there um, you know and, but it, it is what it is and I think it's just a great opportunity for so us. So a, a good example to a true story is where this actually is happening mm -hmm. and in one case particular the daughter starts wearing the modest dress. Right. Her character starts getting better. Mm -hmm. She's not coming home late at night anymore. And she's developing herself to be just a better human being because right. that's obviously what Islam teaches. Now, we know that there's a lot of temptations out there, struggles. So she starts to slip up. She starts going back mm -hmm. to some of her old ways. And she ended up taking the hijab off. Yeah. She was at peace when she was practicing, praying. Now... Whatever happened, she kind of drifted off. The parents now are actually, they're not Muslim, but they're begging her to go back right, right. to where she was. Right. And she kind of stuck in between two worlds now, you know, uh, this, the, 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 the lifestyle that's calling, but she's miserable now, yeah. right? She's very unhappy. And obviously because, you know, when, when you leave the medication for the soul, when you disconnect your heart from its maker, you become sick again. You, you become sick. sick again. Yeah. Yeah, but my point here was the family now in the beginning, how do you say that again, oh my God? Adios. Adi adios. Yeah. <laughs> or, or they're like, oh my God. But now they've they seen her. it in action, Islam in action the right way. Yeah. They want her back where she yeah. was in Islam. You know, and it, it's, it's interesting that you say that. It's because in the beginning when, when they reject her wanting to be a good, righteous Muslim, it's because of those things that are unknown. But then when they see her falling back into those, uh, into the wrong path, I, um, Latinos in general, they know what's right and what's wrong. I, even just general, it's a general rule in humanity. We know what's right and what's wrong. Lying is wrong. Stealing is wrong. We know that from just our own natural disposition that it is wrong. And Latinos, the hard part is they don't want them to leave their cultural, you know, upbringing. I don't want you to be Muslim because then you're going to break the family ties. But in reality, actually, Islam closes them. And it's just a matter of they think that they're not going to be able to be part of that, that, that social spectrum again. A big issue, uh, you know, 
they, they don't want to partake in that fun or anything like that. And it's, and it's amazing how a family member or family members, when they do see them slipping, they like put them back on check to, put, to, to get back on the right path. You know, um, and again, I, I think the most important thing in this opportunity for the sister and for the family is to have other Muslims, Latino Muslims, share with them about Islam, you know, teach them about Islam so that a situation like this doesn't happen. You've seen families take, uh, kick their kids out because they embrace Islam. But it's an opportunity for us to open those doors of communication, educate people about what Islam is, and hopefully make sure that you know, things like that don't happen. You know? Your organization, before we cut out, tell the world a little bit about what you do and your organization, how they can get a hold of you if they want you to come out and speak at an event for Latinos. Well, we started a, a, a small nonprofit organization. Uh, it's called Hablamos Islam. And uh, we have, we've been doing this for, for quite some time, focusing on increasing the resources um, about Islam in Spanish. So everything we do is strictly in Spanish, from translating um, articles, providing articles, videos, uh, classes like we're doing here at, the, um, at a local masjid, and even offering uh, books for children. Uh, one of our biggest projects is creating resources for children, Latino children. And as a matter of fact, during Ramadan, we had a great campaign uh, raising some funds through donations. We were able to send children's books to about 10 countries, um, 10 Latino countries, so that they can have those books for their Eid. Uh, so this is one of the things that we're doing, a small little um, task that we've, em we've embarked on. And if they want to know more about it, they can visit our website at uh, www.hablamosislam.com or hablamosislamninos.com. And they can email us at hablamosislam at gmail if they want to know more about it and if they want to help. Um, we're open for suggestions and comments, and we're trying to do the best we can. Thank you very much. How do you say peace be with you in Spanish? Que la paz esté con, con usted. So that's what it's salam alaikum means. That's it. Alaikum salam. That's it. That's it. And with people of peace, calling people to peace. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And there you have it. The roots that we want to go back to. The original roots. We talked about African Americans going back to Africa. Their roots. Kunta Kinte. He called on the Creator, Allah. And that religion he was upon was the submission and surrender to the Creator of the creation. Now we talked about look the Latinos. Fastest growing way of life in the world is Islam, and they're a part of it. They've clicked on. Common sense tells them this. More so, the heart connects to this. That's right. And what stops most people from really taking the matter seriously? Look, if you end up somewhere on the moon, you want to know, why am I here? What am I doing in this world? Just taking all of the material things that are out there and just piling up money, money. And at the end, it's like a Monopoly game. Think about it. You're chasing all the money, but at the end, when the game is finished, that money's worth what? It's worth nothing. You leave it all behind. So it's time for a spiritual awakening. You've had all the fun and games and toys of this world, but the heart is empty. Islam fills that void. void. That's right. And you got one shot to get it right. And you can't just do it like Burger King your way. It's God's way. It's the Creator's way. We will, inshallah, see you next time. Subscribe if you haven't already. Continue to tune in to the Dean Show. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you.